What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial we are doing. Of course, the Uno R3, most complete starter kit in the entire galaxy. I don't know about that, but I know it's a pretty cool project. If you guys buy this, you will not be disappointed because it covers everything you need to know about entry-level electronics. So in today's lesson, what we're going to do is lesson number nine, talking all about the servo. But before we get started, I just want to show you this pretty cool project that I was able to build. Building off of lesson number seven, which talks about the passive buzzer and building off of Project number eight, lesson number eight, which talks about the tilt ball switch. So I just combined both of them. If you guys saw the video I just posted, I showed you how to make this project. If you guys aren't interested, I'll post it right here. But it's pretty cool. All you have to do is tilt this tilt ball switch up, and it will start playing the song of my people. Sea Shanty 2 from RuneScape Classic. If you ever played that game, you know it's an awesome game. But pretty simple project. If you guys are interested, once again, watch the video I just posted. But without further ado, let's get started with lesson number nine, which talks about the Sherpo. All we're going to need for this project is, of course, the Elegu Uno R3, the Servo, and then three male-to-male -male jumper wires. So I actually already dug these suckers out of our box, so I'm not even going to bother. But pretty much I grabbed three wires, a black, a yellow, and a red, male-to-male. -male. And then, of course, our servo. This is what the servo looks like. And it also is accompanied by this little box, right, or this little bag right here that has these little components. Um, of course, we have our Uno R3 already connected. So let's go ahead and see how we got to wire this sucker up. I'm going to take these components off of my R3 so that we can get started with today's lesson. So before we get started with the wiring, let's read this overview. Basically, a servo is a type of geared motor that can only rotate 180 degrees. It's controlled by sending electrical pulses from your Uno R3 board. These pulses tell the servo what position it should move to. The servo has three wires. The brown one is the ground wire. So make sure you remember that the brown wire is the ground wire. Um, let's see. The red one is the power wire, and that one should be connected to the 5-volt port, and then the orange one is... Uh, is a signal wire should be connected to port number nine so pretty simple pretty straightforward uh, let's get started with the wiring this is what we want it to look like so let's switch our view and get started boom so like the um, instruction said this brown wire is our ground wire so I'm gonna go ahead and put the black wire in there and of course connect this to our ground wire boom, which is right there bingo bango ground Scrolling back up just so we don't miss anything. Let's see. It says the red one is the power, and that one should go to the 5 volt port. So the 5 volt port is actually located on the other side right there. So the red, which is the middle wire, is our power cable. So we'll connect red to red, we'll keep it consistent. And then this cable goes right into this 5 volt port right there. Boom. Yellow cable. It goes into the last port, and I think it said the 9 port. Let's double check. Yes, that goes into the 9 port, which is back over here where we have our ground. Boom, right into there. There we go. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one of these little levers on there. And now, you can screw it in or it just snaps on. I'm just going to snap it on because this is just for demonstrative purposes only. So we'll put that screw back in there, set this to the side. And then the way this connects is you literally just jam it right on top, just like that. Boom. Just like that. So we now have our servo. We're ready to rumble. Let's go ahead and plug this sucker in. And we will get started with the code part. So how are we going to do this? Boom. Just like last time, we are going to navigate to our folder. Wherever you put your Elegoo folder, which contains the PDF, that's where you need to go. Mine happens to be on the desktop, but whether you did it with a uh, the, the CD or you downloaded it from the website, doesn't matter. Just go to that folder, go to your language, code, go to lesson nine. And what we're going to need to do is we need to open up the, full, uh, the sketch, which is in this location right here. 
can close down our other IDE terminals, make this full screen. And then of course we also need to um, upload the library, which happens to be in the same exact folder. So the way you do that is you just come up here to sketch, include library, add zip library, and you're just gonna navigate to the exact same place. Boom, English, code, nine, and it's right here. Just select the zip file and open it, and it will go ahead. If you have not already included it, it's gonna ask you to do this. I'm just gonna click yes, we'll just reinstall it, boom. Once it's installed, we're ready to rumble. So let's see what this code does. Coming on back to our other view, boom. When I click upload, three, two, one, upload. Boom. We can see that this sucker is rotating. Pretty cool. Now what could we use this for? The first thing that comes to my mind is we could use this for a little spacebar clicker. Now I don't know how or why you would want to do that. The What this device is really used for is for ailerons and rudders on airplanes. So remote control airplanes, if you need to control the aileron or the flap that's on the wing, which controls your pitch and your rotation, right? The rudder, which controls your rotation, or that might be yaw, whichever, pitch roll yaw. This is how you would do it with an airplane. I'm not too sure if this is what we would use for a helicopter. Maybe if the helicopter happens to have a rudder on it, some helicopters do. Not too sure. But first thing that comes to my mind is, of course, an airplane. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. Uh, just looking at the code, it looks pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this so our servo stops rotating. But looking at the code, it does look pretty simple, of course. Up here at the top, we have an include, which includes our library, servo.h which is the file we were just looking at. Servo, my servo. So servo is a class. So kind of like how we were using int, int, const, int, which allows us to store a number in a certain uh, variable name. This is the same thing, except we have a servo, which is a class, which is kind of different from uh, an int. An int, all it can do is hold a number. Servo is much more, uh, in depth, we can actually come in here, let's see, documents, Arduino libraries. Let's take a look at what the source code actually looks like. So documents, Arduino, libraries, servo. And we can actually look, where is it? Source at this guy. And I wanna open this with notepad, boom. So this is what the class actually looks like. So it looks like we have different methods. We have an attach, uh, attaches a servo motor to an IO pin. Another form of attach, which attaches a pin, setting the min and max values in microseconds. Default min is 544, max is 2400. Right, this sends the angle in degrees. As you can see, let's see. My servo dot right, so this is the angles that we're setting. 90, 30, 90, 150. So that comes from this function right here. Right in milliseconds, uh, sends the servo pulse width in milliseconds. Read, attached, attached, returns true if there's a servo attached. See, attach nine, which happens to be, if we take a look, happens to be the pin that we're using, nine. So it returns true in setup if we happen to have it attached to pin number nine, right, which will send the angle like we just saw, delay, we've seen delay before. Um, so pretty simple code. Now you can totally alter this to do with whatever you want with this. Maybe we'll do that in another lesson, so stay tuned. But that's really all I have for you guys today with the servo, pretty simple stuff. In the next lesson, we're gonna jump a little bit deeper, talk about the ultrasonic sensor module. Now I've seen some pretty cool uh, videos and tutorials on YouTube of people attaching this to a servo, having it rotate, and then creating a radar sensor. Maybe we will do that after our next lesson. So stay tuned. Really appreciate everyone that's uh, made it this far in this tutorial series. We're almost at lesson 10, almost one third of the way done with this entire box. If you guys are still with me, shout out to you guys. I really appreciate all the support. You guys have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.